This is a PSA because if anyone is thinking, oh, well, even if I vote for the Reform Party, it's not going to matter because I'm in a safe Labour constituency or whatever else. Every constituency is about to become a safe Labour constituency. But I digress. What's really important is that even if reform only get a handful of seats, they get something called short money, which is for opposition parties in, within Parliament. And the higher the number of people that vote for them, because it's on a percentage basis of the popular vote, if you to, to coin a phrase, and they get more short money for more people that vote for them. So it's really important that even if you're in a no hoper, as I am, by the way, that you vote for them because they get more benefits within Parliament, even if there's only a yep. few of them within there. So it's really, and, really important. And also, you know, it's important that we show, that the country shows there's a desire for change. The more people yeah. that vote, that tallies up. I mean, there's going to be huge calls if, if, if there is this millions of people voting, if Nigel's saying six million or more potentially. That's a huge call. And we, they only get, what, three or four seats. Let's say that that's what happens. There'll be massive calls for the electoral system to be changed. And that's actually what's needed. So, yeah, exactly. uh, you have to vote. so, so reform have to vote. reform's aim in this general election, for anyone that isn't clear, is, is not to beat the Tories on seats. That's not going to happen. Well, mm. very unlikely, let's be honest. Reform's aim is to beat the Tories on vote share. Even if that results in yeah. no seats, that would be impressive for them. And then if we end up in a scenario where reform have beaten the Tories on vote share, yet have, you know, zero, one, two, three seats versus the Tories have a hundred or something like that, that is, as Alex says, is going to send a huge message that there is demand for change. Yeah. All right. Since we've started with reform, I'm going to uh continue with reform. <laughs> yes, I I am. Yeah. I've just been for for viewers. Sorry, I've Darren. just been Bannying about with the order, uh, and uh, now I'm now going to go in the opposite order. So never mind. But I'll I'll start with reform. Let's let's open with the best for a change, eh? Uh, and uh, oh, that's Shamima. That's not reform. I'll come back to her. I'll come back to Shamima. That's just um, a little taste of what's to come, guys. It's it is indeed. Deep. It is indeed. So. Uh, I was really struck by this polling um, and or data rather, and it is a data that has been collated by a company called Hootsuite, and Hootsuite are a social media analytics company, and it says that the combined uh, Facebook engagement uh, of the Labour Party and the Conservative Party is only sixty percent of reforms engagement. So Farage's own official Facebook page has pulled in 2.1 million reactions and shares, whilst Rishi's, uh, compared to that, has managed just 270,000. So that Farage is 2.1 million, Rishi Sunak 270,000. Starmer on only marginally more at 300,000. I mean, I don't know who's clicking on Sakia Starmer's Facebook page. I guess it's a bit like one of those ASMR videos where you need something really boring to help you fall asleep. You know, this sort of monotonous drone uh, helps you get off, so to speak. Not get off like that, unless you're a really right. dirty perv. But um, anyway, I digress. I'm, I'm being rude already. We're only 10 minutes in. And Nigel it, has also been killing it elsewhere. So on X, he's got 13.9 million likes and retweets. His videos amassing 39.4 billion views during this election wow. alone. That is incredible. Starmer's managed 1.95 billion views and Sunak 5.34 billion views. And Guido Impressive. conclude something's happening out there on social media. Now, I don't have the stats to hand for TikTok, but something really is happening on TikTok. I'm telling you that right now, because his reach on TikTok is tantamount to that of the National Rally in France, where you've got the likes of Jordan Bardella, who is the 28 year old uh, uh, prime ministerial candidate within France. And they're doing incredibly well. So very well. So, uh, yes. And then... I was, well, we'll get on to the sun backing Labour in a minute because I was, a, I was a bit miffed by that, to be perfectly honest, given how many sun readers will yeah. be voting for reform. Uh, 
But the other piece of polling data that I was struck by, which sort of feeds into the TikTok uh, phenomenon that I was talking about, is is this. Why aren't you zooming in, bloody thing? Uh, uh, and th- this shows by JL Partners for The Sun, that paper that we don't like anymore, but never mind. In s- this youth vote, the male youth vote reform is actually on... It's, 35%. Now, these are 16 to 17 year olds, so they can't vote for reform yet. But in 2029, they will be voting for reform because the Keir Starmer is going to give them all the bloody vote to try and gerrymander. How's that looking out for you, Sakir? Right? You've, you've gone and really done it for yourself now because they don't want your party. They recognise, right, that they're, they're going to be poorer than their parents. Their country's going to hell in a handcart because we've invited people here that don't share our views and values and culture and actually want to supersede theirs with our, by, in, instead of ours. They're Looking at their prospects and thinking, I don't know how I'm going to be able to access uh, schooling for my children, how I'm going to be able to get health care when I'm elderly, all these other things where the country seems to be going in absolutely the wrong direction. And Nigel, at being the superb communicator that he is, is actually managing to get through to these people who aren't the most politically engaged, stereotypically mm. politically engaged anyway. So it's it's quite incredible, isn't it? And Chloe, you're still quite young. What do you say about this? I think it's really exciting to see that this narrative that young people are always left wing is is finally being broken down. Mm-hmm. I've often honestly despise people my age because I feel like they're just a bunch of left wing nutters and you definitely feel that when you're at university and you're surrounded by the worst of the worst in that sense. So this is really promising. I think it's really interesting that we've had this split between young men and young women, yet yeah, where young women are going more left and young um young men are going more right i'm i'm not sure what the polls are on say 16 to 17 year old women but i'm i'm sure it's probably a very different picture so that's very interesting it will be interesting to see if, if that continues but you know i think you're right is young people have been told for years and years that you know the labor party are the nice people who are going to make sure mm. that you young people have social mobility and an opportunity and it's going to be more fair but i think finally they're seeing through the bullshit and they've seen that neither of the two main parties are going to give them a better future than their parents had you know we're all sat here thinking as young people when the hell are we going to get to own our house like our parents did you know if we're lucky we'll get a crummy little tiny flat full of mold for the same money so i understand why young people are are are, are moving to reform and it definitely is nigel himself you know it's someone who actually talks like a normal human being he's fun he's not boring like Keir Starmer or Rishi Sunak you can actually you know he's someone you feel like you can have a laugh with you can enjoy his videos even if you're not someone who's typically involved in politics so it's great how he's got more people interested in politics by just making it more fun and interesting he went viral just by saying Alex oh lovely melons I mean, that, that's but it's just a bit of banter, you know, like it, it's slapstick comedy. It's sort of carry on esque, really. Uh, and uh, that resonates with people because, you know, you compare him with Takia Starmer and it's like night and day, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, like, it, people just want their politicians to talk like human beings. It's really not hard. And the, what Nigel d- does so well is just be himself. There's something really to be said about, about that. And young people can't relate to politicians because they're so robotic and so corporate. You can only start even mildly relating to a politician when you've worked 10 to 20 years in a corporate business because you learn to speak like that and think like that yourself young people they look at this stuff and they're like what are you talking about i can't i can't get through to you i can't i can't i cannot relate to you that's also why a lot of young people liked boris johnson because he was funny he had a sense of humor he was you sort of on the more offensive should i say with his language and nigel's the same he doesn't pull any punches and there's something so attractive about that to voters it's the same thing for trump you may not like what he says but you you darn well know he believes what he says he genuinely mm. does whether it's bullshit or not excuse my language i beg your pardon everybody but whether it's nonsense or not people like 
the same way they liked Thatcher because she said it how it was. And again, you knew where you stood with them. And I think that resonates with young people more than any other part of our society. Yeah. T on Twitter has just said how to lose the youth vote. Tell them that they're oppressors when they have only ever felt oppressed. Yeah, um, and so I've, true. I've, but, you know, that, that's a good way of putting it, really. Yeah. Well, and, and I, you know, I've got um, a lot of young, younger brothers, and I say this every week, but they're so important to talk about because they are the future generation. And they are most, half of them, I've got two, two sides of my family, half of them are, are mixed, two of them are mixed race, uh, the rest are white English boys. And the white English boys really suffer because they have no DEI to apply for. They, they can't apply mm-hmm. for DEI, especially when they're looking at grad roles. Just tell viewers what DEI is, 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 Alex. Yeah, sorry, I do this every week. Diversity, equity and inclusion rules, which mean that if you are falling in some sort of protected minority group or look slightly different from a white British person, you are escalated through an interview process so they can increase their diversity quotas and hit them. And this is really affecting those younger people, particularly white, straight British boys, we seem to find. And they're going to become the most disenfranchised group going into the future, in my opinion. Yes, and uh, uh, I've just, you've just reminded me, Alex, of the figures. So on short money, and I, I tweeted about this yesterday, but on short money, uh, which is the money that they they would res- reform would get if they become an opposition party within parliament, so have any sort of, uh, uh, manage to claw any imprint within parliament itself, Uh, From 1st of April 2022, eligible parties receive, what is that? Is that 19 million? Um, 19,000, 19,000. 19,000 for every seat won at the last election. Oh, so they're not going to get anything for that. Plus 38.75 for every 200 votes. 38.75 for every 200 votes. So if they get, do not ask me to work this out off the top of my head, but if they get what, 6 million votes? You know, that's that's still not a bad sum of cash to be putting in your back pocket. Not that I made that sound like Nigel's going to have a holiday with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> for for building a movement for 2029. It's not an insignificant sum of money. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that just shows that if you vote reform in a seat where reform are unlikely to win, which will probably be for most people watching this, that is not a wasted vote. If we're looking at this long term, we've got to look ahead exactly. to the election that is in five years time. Look, this election, Labour are going to win anyway. You can't change that. Sorry, we might change the number of seats they win but you know it is what it is we've got to think about what's going to happen in the future we've got to think long term we've got to vote now with the intention to change the election result in five years time yeah 100 percent correct uh and i mean was there ever because uh I, i've just i've been speaking to a few friends actually and they've been saying that they're i'm in an r about whether or not to actually vote reform uh, and they're in seats mm. where the Tories are still looking like they could win. Mm. And they, mm. they're saying, I would feel really guilty about this. What would you say, Alex, to those who are, because, you, you know, it wasn't that long ago you were a uh, supporter yep. of the Conservative Party. What would you say yep. to those who are on the fence and saying, well, look, if my Tory MP could have done it, I quite like my Tory MP. Why should I get rid of them? Yeah, well, I'm actually no? really clear about this. There are some Tory MPs that I would go to bat for every day of the week. Um, the Rosendells, for example, the, the MPs like Andrew Rosendell, for me, if I was in his constituency, I would vote Conservative. Romford. And I say, uh, R- uh, Romford, that's right. And I say that, and I know a lot of people get upset that you, know, you should just vote for your party that you believe in, but there are some really, really good Tory MPs. They are genuinely great members of parliament. And there's something to be said about keeping those people because they are basically, they, they support most of reform's policies. And those are the Tories in the future that will be kind to the small amount of reform MPs that will make it into a seat. Now, I I would also say this, and this is also something people have to make a judgment for themselves. If you are in a Tory seat that is, let's say, very close to becoming a reform seat and it's necking it between the Tories and reform, I would hedge my bets on reform at that point because the Tory party itself is going to have a whip and it's going to have a line to take. And that yeah. MP will be very, will find it very difficult to stray away from that. And at that point in time, I would rather a reform candidate. But if you're in a seat where it's a threat between Labour and the Tories, and you really like 
your Tory MP and they're a great MP, I'd back them. I'd back them tomorrow if you can. Have you got what it takes to be a reasoned presenter? Well, send us a short clip of yourself to join at reasoned.uk and we might be seeing you on this very channel very soon indeed.